Okay, I think I'm back again now. The I've been having a lot of trouble. I keep coming back on and the signal keeps getting cut off. But uh, I'll just... I think I've found a spot right here maybe where I have a good signal. So I'll continue. I was... Let's see, what was I talking about when I got cut off? Um, the... NASA program, I think I was talking about how it is a, and now I'm getting the message again, my connection is weak. So I may not be able to do this class live if I keep getting cut off like this, so I will make a video and post it on my Facebook page here. But uh, until then, I will continue to see if I get cut off again. So uh, this whole program of NASA, as I was explaining, it is getting a lot of taxpayer money and a lot of that money was diverted to the secret space programs but it's just really a show it was all a show and the higher ups knew what they were doing many most people who were working in NASA didn't understand it either but now the truth is coming out about all of these uh, secrets that the cabal is keeping from us about free energy about this the fact that we have been to other planets and even other star systems and we have alliances with different extraterrestrial groups who have been visiting our planet for thousands and really millions of years as I started talking yesterday even 2 billion years ago or 2.6 billion years ago I think is the exact figure uh, when the first human-like beings came to this planet so that was a long long time ago so all of this information is being kept secret from us by those selfish and evil people who are more interested in preserving their own control over humanity than letting us know the truth. So the last question that I'm going to answer right now was about how do I know all this? So of course some of it is from my own extraterrestrial contact but a lot of it is from books and other information. So I'm just going to share with you right now three of the books, three of the main books that I'll be using in this course and that has a lot of this information. And you can get these books if you want. Uh, they're available and they're all quite recent, just published in the last year or two. So the first one, which I've already shown here, although I had, I'm trying to figure out how I can, yes, how I can reverse this so I can show you the books frontwards because on the selfie the everything becomes backwards so here all right so this is the first book it is called insiders reveal secret space programs and extraterrestrial alliances by Michael E Sala PhD so this book gives all this information about how the Germans started a secret space program in the 1930s even 1940s and then how the United States got that technology from the Germans after the Second World War. So that is the first book that has a lot of this information. Another one also recently published is called The Omniverse by Alfred Lambremont Webre. I don't actually know how to pronounce his name properly but Alfred Webre and as you can see in the subtitle it is transdimensional intelligence time travel the afterlife and the secret colony on Mars so this book also actually this is where I got the word transdimensional that I used yesterday uh, he uses it maybe in a slightly different way than I do but for me uh, as I was explaining about the cosmology, there is a transdimensional existence which is separate from this world with all of its many dimensions that we're living in. So this is also a book that I will be using in this course. And finally, this book by David Wilcock called The Ascension Mysteries. And the subtitle is Revealing the Cosmic Battle Between Good and Evil. So... In this book, David Wilcock writes about the ancient builder race and he talks about the history of our planet. So this is a very good book. 
he has a lot of his personal information. It's sort of an autobiography also. But uh, he has a lot of information that I will be using as, about the history of our ancient history that is talking about millions and billions of years ago on our planet. So these these books are, uh, you can say, the textbooks for this course. And if you want to purchase them, I'm sure you can find them on Amazon or uh, go online. You can order them. And they're very important information in these books. So um, let's get back to the topic that we were discussing. I was just answering some questions. Um, but I want to talk a little bit now about uh, Arthur C. Clarke who I mentioned him because he's a very famous science fiction writer and lived in the 20th century. And he wrote 2001 A Space Odyssey in which there was this monolith, which was actually an ancient builder race technological artifact that had been discovered by the secret space programs. And they gradually are revealing this information to us through science fiction. And when I met Arthur C. Clarke in Sri Lanka at his residence in 1985, he specifically said, as I'm just repeating myself because people may have just joined this live class or we got cut off, so I don't know. I hope people are coming back who got cut off. But I will repeat that Arthur C. Clarke personally told me that he knew extraterrestrials. In fact, I had a picture of an extraterrestrial, and he said, I know him. <laughs> so, and that was a, a not completely human-looking extraterrestrial, sort of a reptilian-looking. So, these great science fiction writers, including others besides Arthur C. Clarke, they know, they're given a little bit of this information which they incorporate into their science fiction, uh, just like Star Wars, is also not fiction. It's a lot of factual information in there. But uh, they're not allowed to tell the truth openly. <coughs> so I'm just trying to get my bearing here. I've had to, I've left my notes actually inside over, I'm outside now, that's where I was inside the, that building there, and I was not getting a good signal. So I've had to come outside to do this class. But um, I was going to talk about the ancient builder race a little bit more and their technology, which has been discovered, as I mentioned before. On the moon, underneath the moon's surface, there are many ancient, ancient bases. In fact, I was going to talk about the moon. The moon is a very different thing than what we usually think. We see it up there in the sky, of course, every night. But we don't know what the moon is. Uh, what's most uh, uh, shocking is that it didn't fit in with their scientific theories, but when NASA went to the moon and got some of the moon rocks, they found that the moon is actually older than the Earth, which didn't make any sense. And when they did one experiment, they crashed a craft into the moon. It reverberated like a bell. This information is available, although it's not widely publicized. But um, you can find this information on the internet if you do a search for this experiment, which NASA did. So the moon is actually hollow. The moon is not what we were taught in school or in astronomy classes. The moon is actually hollowed out and inside there are huge caverns, huge even cities and military bases and scientific laboratory bases and programs actually for monitoring the earth and there are genetic laboratories, experiments that are being done on humanity, genetically engineering our, us and this is a huge uh, truth that has been kept secret pretty well. But it's now coming out more and more, as especially whistleblowers who have been involved in these programs and are now coming out and talking. So I mentioned Andrew Basciago yesterday. Uh, 
and there are many others who are also talking about their so just do a, do a little research yourself on secret space programs, on the moon bases. A number of different extraterrestrial races have bases on the moon. Uh, it's sort of like Antarctica. In our world, Antarctica has been divided up and different countries have bases and claim different parts. They may even be political enemies, but they agree to work together and cooperate together on Antarctica, at least not attack each other sometimes. But uh, the moon is like that. It is an interplanetary or interstellar uh, Antarctica where people up from different planets, from different star systems, have their own bases. And even if they're not friendly with each other, they cooperate to the extent of not attacking each other's bases on the moon. So a lot of the ancient builder technology is present on the moon. And most of it, as I explained earlier, was uh, damaged or destroyed, is not functional, but it has been discovered. I'm getting the message again, my connection is weak. So um, let me move to the other topic I wanted to discuss in this class was the cosmology of the transdimensional world. Again, this is something that people may consider strange. I, it, my connection is weak, I'm getting the message, so I may get cut off. If I do, I think what I'll do is just end the class if I get cut off again, and I will finish it, not live, but uh, I'll make a video and post it later. But let me just say that in 2004, uh, I attended a program with the Monroe Institute. Robert Monroe was a very, very interesting man. He was an American businessman in the 1950s, who started having out-of-body experiences spontaneously. He just would find himself outside of his body, up near the ceiling of his room, looking down at his body, and he thought he was going crazy. He went to psychologists and psychiatrists and doctors to try to find what was wrong, but they said there was nothing wrong with him, until finally one of his counselors said, oh, <laughs> don't be worried about this. This is something that yogis do all the time. They go outside of their body. You can do that. So Robert Monroe then developed a practice for how he could travel out of his body intentionally. And he wrote several books. The most famous one is called Journeys Out of the Body, in which he describes this, what happened to him. He was a scientist, actually. Uh, he was into radio and radio signal technologies. And he discovered that by coordinating the two halves of the brain, because we have two hemispheres in our brain which are uh, connected, but they usually don't function together. But he found out that by coordinating or synchronizing them, uh, we could develop many powers that ordinarily we don't have, which are include out-of-body travel. So I attended one of the programs of his Monroe Institute in 2004, and I met him several times. <laughs> he had passed away already, but he was traveling outside of his body. The body is not necessary. We exist after the body is finished. So, and several people that knew him personally, when I described the experiences I had of meeting him, they said, that's Bob. It was exactly his characteristics, his personal, the way he always acted, the way he spoke. I never met him uh, in the body, but I had met him several times. And one of the most important things that Robert Monroe discovered when he was traveling out of his body, that he traveled to other planets and he traveled throughout space, but he came to a barrier. He could not pass, he could not cross, he could not get around, he could not go through, he could not get under. And he was frustrated because he didn't know what this was and what was on the other side of it. And he, he wrote in some of his books that this had happened to him and he really wondered what was on the other side of it. So when I met him in 2004, he was interested to go onto the other side of that barrier. So I told him, let's go. I can take you there. So he was very happy to hear this. And we did approach that barrier. The way I experienced it that time was just like, you know, hundreds and thousands of very sharp blades, swords, or large cutting 
cutting constantly. So there was no way to get through it. And this is the barrier that he described in his book, uh, experienced in different ways by different people. Some describe it as an ocean or a river that you can't cross over. But we did manage to cross that barrier and entered into the trans-dimensional world, which is on the other side of that barrier. And as soon as we got there, <laughs> we could see in the distance or down below just unlimited numbers of brightly shining um, worlds. Uh, and he immediately wanted to go see them. I tried to discourage him, but he just left me and he went shooting straight down towards one of those brilliantly shining globes. So this is the most important feature of the transdimensional world that I wanted to share with you in describing the cosmos and cosmology. That there are, I don't know how many, unlimited numbers of many, many brilliant shining worlds. And information about them can be obtained from different sources. And I'm going to give a whole class about this information. There's an, a book called the Urantia Book, which although I'm not completely satisfied with it, and I'm sure there's some things in it that are not uh, completely true, but there is information about the transdimensional world and about these worlds that Robert Monroe and I saw. So I'm going to conclude uh, the class now because our time has passed, and I am very, very eager to share more of this information with you and I will bring the Urantia book and read from it tomorrow to describe some of the details of the transdimensional existence, which is, as I said yesterday, the far by far the most important information for us to have about the cosmos and about cosmology. All right, thank you very, very much for attending. Uh, and I'm going to go and do those exercises if anybody wants to join along with me. I hope that the signal will be maintained as I go back into the building. I sort of have to go in there because I set it up for doing the exercises. So you're welcome to join me here if you want, if my signal stays on. And I finally think I've got the system figured out so I won't waste a lot of time trying to get the camera set up here. Well, I'm getting the message your connection is weak, so I may lose you, but until we do, or if we do, I'm going to do these exercises again. If you were here yesterday, this will be more familiar. Otherwise, this are, these are very, very good for the body, for the mind, for the spirit. Uh, it's a yoga exercise, which I have developed a little bit further than what I was taught. Beginning this balancing position and stretch back. <sighs> Raise your arms. Bring your hands down. Put your hands on your knees. Touch your toes. Put your left foot forward. Of course, it looks like my right foot on this reversed <laughs> selfie video. And arch your back, put your head up. And in this position, which again is not very visible, but from the side you can see it better. And then and then coming down like this. Again, this is not very visible. Let me go back a little. You can see it better from here. And then just lying flat on the floor with the arms out. Coming back up. And then the opposite, the right foot forward. toes, and 
and back into the balancing position. So thank you very much. I'm very happy that even though we kept getting cut off, at least we got a little bit of the class in. And uh, I'm going to try to find out how I can prevent this from happening. So please bear with me as I try to figure out the technical aspects of giving this class a little bit more. So uh, thank you again very much, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. I hope we won't have all these connection problems then. And I'll go into more detail tomorrow about the structure of the trans-dimensional world, which is, of course, undoubtedly the most important thing for us to learn. And I will then talk a little bit more also about the history of the